Some of you have asked me how the M4 MacBook Air works in sustained workloads and especially in terms of uh, temperatures. And in today's video, I thought we can take a look at that in on the M4 MacBook Air and how it behaves when you actually push it a little bit. It's actually a little bit surprising because uh, having a computer without a fan is not really the best in terms of uh, performance. I think most people know that, but uh, not all of you do that. <laughs> So what I am having here is a program called Cinebench, and this is just something to push the limits of the CPU in the M4 MacBook Air and have something to heat it up maximum. This is just to show you how the speed is. So here is I have a tool that shows the speed of the CPU at the current state. It's 3.7 gigahertz ish right now when it's idling with logic open and little stuff, other stuff. The max speed on the M4 CPU is 4.4 gigahertz. Have your eyes on this uh, megahertz thing here and the temperature right after I start the uh, multi-core test here on Cinebench, and you can see how fast it actually goes down. So I press start here now, take a look, 4.2 gigahertz, 4.3, 3.8, 3.7, 3.5, and yeah, it just goes down. And look at the temperature here, we are now up at 108 degrees. And we can see at the CPU load stuff here, that's on max. The efficiency cores are pushed to the max and the performance cores are pushed to the max while Cinebench is rendering and we are now down at 3.3 gigahertz, 3.2 and it's sort of adjusted based on temperature and you might say that yeah but I mean the M4 MacBook Air is not uh, a Mac you buy because you want to render stuff, you don't render stuff on a MacBook Air, uh, I mean render video, no I know that but this is just to show you what happens when you load the MacBook Air to the max. And as you can see, the CPU speed goes down. The reason it's going down is because it doesn't have a fan. So you can't cool down the CPU. And if you can't cool down the CPU, does it explode? Well, 20 years ago it might, but today the CPU have built-in features that will turn down the speed of the CPU, which will then turn down the power requirements, then of course the heat. So you can see now the heat went down to 95 degrees, 93. The speed of the CPU is like 2.2 gigahertz. May I remind you the M4 CPU is at 4.4 4 gigahertz uh, as standard. So 2.1, 2 gigahertz, it's uh, throttling pretty bad. It's still doing that. You can sort of see the graph going down here. It's still going down 2.1. Let's just run it for a while. I can maybe speed up the video or something or jump cut, see, see where we land. So I've been running for a few minutes. Seems like it's uh, going down to 1.8. So uh, 1.9, 1.8. So it is uh, settling around below two gigahertz. So when you push it really hard, it will throttle and you won't get the uh, max amount of performance from the computer. And that's obviously you don't you won't get that because you, you don't have a fan. There are some sort of uh, third party laptop fans or some stuff you can buy and uh, sort of put the uh, M4 MacBook Air in. But I mean that if you're going to use like two, three, five hundred dollars for that, maybe you can just go and buy an uh, M4 MacBook Pro with a fan instead. But yeah, this is just to demonstrate how throttling works on the um, M4 MacBook Air. And we can take a look at a music production project as well. So if we stop this and we take a look at Logic. So here I have a real project that is released and everything. It's out on Spotify. It has over 200,000 streams if I am allowed to brag a little bit. And this is a track that is, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter what type of track it is, but uh, I have a loop going on here. It has a few soft synths, uh, mostly soft synthesizers, not a lot of samples. And uh, yeah, the basic stuff like EQ compressors, the Legend Serum, Diva, uh, Repro, multiband compressor, fab filter stuff. So if I play this, we can also take a look at the temperatures and we see that we have a different type of uh, stuff going here. So we can see that uh, we are at 
we don't even use the max CPU. So we are at around four, giga, four gigahertz. Let's bring up the CPU meter. So disregard the full stuff from before here. This is from Cinebench. We can close Cinebench down. This is a finished project. It works just fine uh, on the M4 MacBook Air. We have a lot of headroom going here, or maybe not a lot of headroom, but a little bit. And we can see that the CPU is around 4.1 gigahertz. So that's more like uh, the speed we should get. The max is 4.4. You can see it also goes down to like 3.6. So it's sort of fluctuates a little bit, but we can uh, make this project a little bit bigger. Take everything here and just duplicate it one time. Loop that. We can see that we are using 4.4 gigahertz. So it's pushing the CPU a bit more. And uh, let's have an eye on the temperature at the same time. It's 89, 90. And let's see if this is going to throttle. So we have to loop it for a while, but we are still at 4.4 gigahertz, which is the max speed of the M4 CPU. But you can see that the temperature is around 92 degrees, 94 degrees, 95. And yeah, we just have to wait a little bit, so uh, I can uh, probably jump cut uh, to a later place when something <laughs> interesting happens. Yeah, so it's been running for a while now, and we can see it went down to 3.2 gigahertz, 3.1. So the speed uh, went down, actually. We can see that the CPU load went up when we duplicated the track. And now it's actually down to 2.8, 2 2.7, 3.0, 2.9. So it's creeping down. The speed is creeping down with time. Let's keep it for a while more and see what happens. Oh, now we are now on a 2.7. But I mean, the temperature stays within reason, 80 degrees. That's not really too hot for a CPU like this. And we are staying at like 2.6 and 2.7-ish. But as you see in this example, you can see that if we run sustained workloads, the speed will go down. So what happens now if I stop this? Let's just stop this project and take a look at the CPU. It goes up again to 4.2 gigahertz. So it's around 4.2, 4.1. Let's make it cool down a little bit and see what happens after that. And again, when you don't have a fan, the cooldown period is going to be a little bit slower compared to a Mac with a fan. So now we are at around 70 degrees. Let's play start again and see the speed. And if you see here, we are at 4.4 gigahertz, but we quickly go down again to three. 2.7, 2.8, because it heats up uh, pretty quickly. Here's the thing with the M4 MacBook Air. People ask me if it's uh, able to run this and that project, and honestly, it's uh, it's almost impossible for me to say if it's uh, able to run <laughs> anything really, because it's. I mean, it it depends on what type of plugins you use in your project, how many plugins it is, how what type of plugins it is, what settings you have on the plugins. If you have a oversampling setting on the plugins, there are so many variables, so it's almost impossible to say your project is going to work with an M4 MacBook Air. You just have to. Uh, look at my other tests on my channel and other people, of course, and see what they have tested on different Macs. And you have to draw your own conclusions on how a computer is going to work for you. But I think the takeaway with the M4 MacBook Air is that if you have a music production project that isn't really that demanding, it will work just fine. But if you have a project that is sort of living on the edge of what the computer is able to handle, and you, if you have to run the project for a long period of time, if you have to, I mean, play it, loop it for a long time, you would eventually see that the temperature of the CPU goes up 
And when it reaches a certain limit, when you reaches a temperature saturation in the computer, it has to clock down the CPU speed to be able to keep it running. As you saw here now, when I was running my project duplicated two times, it was able to sustain it. But you could see that the CPU speed went down. I could have run it for like four hours and see what happens. But I think that it reaches a sort of equilibrium there and... Um, it stays like like this for the foreseeable time but that's something you have to think about when you are buying a mac without a fan uh, how it's going to uh, to handle uh, loads like this but you also saw the difference from cinebench the difference between cinebench and logic cinebench is just pushing the cpu just max it's just bang go 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 cpu and you just see that the the speed of the CPU just drops like a brick. It just goes down, straight down. Yeah, that's because the temperature goes up and it just has to keep it below a certain temperature. A few years ago, like 20, 20 years ago, a uh, CPU would per maybe explode or burn up or something like that. I have also had people asking me, well, doesn't the computer get damaged or they're you're like uh, afraid that it will be damaged if you like run it for a long time or something like that and no it's not going to be damaged because cpu have built-in fail safes so this is actually what we are seeing now in this video you're seeing the fail safes of the cpu it's actually what's uh, preventing it from being damaged uh, the clocking down thing throttling which is the word we should use yeah i hope this clears up some stuff i don't think this is a bad computer i have seen a lot of laptops in my time a laptop of this form factor this type of performance being able to run this for a long period of time i think this is really impressive and the load we are running now is maybe a little bit unrealistic on the m4 macbook air but it's just to show you how it handles uh, stuff like this and yeah i think it handles it uh, really good i still recommend the m4 macbook air i think you can use it for a lot of uh, different types of music production it's going to be working just fine i have duplicated my project it can even run three copies of it uh, for for like five or eight minutes and then you will get a system overload but i mean if you have projects like that you can freeze some stuff and maybe use more sense i don't have a lot of sense on my tracks here you can also if you know you are going to have sustained workloads for a long period of time you might consider going for a uh, mac with a uh, fan or or maybe a more high performing mac or something like that but uh, yeah very impressed with the m4 macbook air and i hope this video at least showed you how it works in uh, in some uh, stressful <laughs> situations if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i can't decide for you <laughs> what mac you're going to to choose you can ask me those questions but uh yeah it's up to you ultimately yeah if you have any more ideas on what i should test or something you would like to see with this uh, m4 macbook air or the m4 ultra or no m3 ultra let me know in the comments below and i might get to it that's all thank you and i will see you in the next one goodbye